Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, May 31st. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 92 days, the game against Michigan in 183 days. And now we know what time that Akron game is going to kick off. As promised on the show with Matt Sars earlier in the week, some of the networks dropped their early season kickoff times, some of the network assignments on Thursday. So we're going to be talking about some of those. Learn some stuff about some of the games later on in the season. Not everything, but we know more about, for example, when Ohio State's going to play Northwestern at Wrigley Fields. We're going to be talking about all of that today with our buddy Kevin Noon of BuckeyeHuddle.com. Kevin, let's start with the season opener, Ohio State and Akron. It was announced earlier in the week that Ohio State is a favorite by more than 50 points in that game, 50 and a half points in that game. So, of course... We're going to get the CBS on SEC music. It's going to be a 3.30 kickoff on national TV. I'm sure a lot of people saw that and went, huh? So can you explain to the wonderful listeners at home why CBS would want to televise Ohio State and Akron at 3.30 p.m.? Well, obviously, so they can cut in with young Sheldon at halftime because uh, this game is going to get out of hand quickly. 50 and a half points, a lot of points. But all of that there, I mean, you want to go out and start off the season if you can. If, if, it's a, if it's kind of a meh week and you don't necessarily have a lot of options, why not grab the program that turns on TV sets unlike any other program in the country, and that is Ohio State. Um, yeah, I when I saw it at first, I was like, God, it must really be a thin week. But when you sit there and see maybe who gets first pick, I'm – I guarantee you CBS did not waste a lot of capital grabbing this game. It was just sitting right there, and it's like, oh, why not? Ohio State's supposed to be really good this year. Why not get in there when you can and and televise the Buckeyes and set things off because we are now in a SEC-less world for CBS. It was kind of one foot in and one foot out of the pool last year. Now it's completely in the Big Ten pool, so... Why not go with the team that is the the Vegas betting favorite to win the Big Ten Conference and make the college football playoff, the Ohio State Buckeyes? Thinking back to last year, I think the season opener at Indiana, that might have also been a 330 CBS game. And, uh, you know, if if I'm remembering that correctly, and this is one of these things I could have looked up before we started recording, but it just occurred to me as you were talking there. It was CBS for sure, but I don't remember the remember kick time. Yeah, but yeah, this is a chance to, there are a lot of mismatches week one. This is a chance to get, you know, one of these fan bases is going to be tuned in. Don't, don't lie to yourself. You're going to be watching this game. It'll be fine. One piece of good news, because this is a little bit of a weird time for this game. The Georgia Clemson game, you got to remember that it was announced as a noon kick. So you'll be able to watch the Georgia Clemson game, which is probably the best game of week one before you switch channels to the Ohio State Akron game, or you'll be able to watch it in the tailgating lots at Ohio Stadium. Wherever you are, you'll, you will be able to watch it without having to split screen with the Buckeyes. So that is some good news. Week two, this is one where I think this is probably where you would have guessed this one was going to be. Ohio State, every team in the Big Ten is, has to be on the Big Ten network twice, generally, including one conference game. But they're going to try and put a lot of times, how many times have we seen, Kevin, the primetime Big Ten Network game that everyone kind of rolls their eyes. Why is why are we watching Ohio State play a MAC team in primetime? Well, because they want to put it on Big Ten Network, and this is one of the time slots Big Ten Network has. Ohio State, Western Michigan, 7.30 p.m. on September 7th on Big Ten Network. Yeah, you have a better chance of not competing against yourself when you are in largely your non-conference schedule, and now you are a conference of 18 teams. And even and now they do try to put conference games every week, but let's say for argument's sake, fourteen teams are playing non-conference. BTN has to multiplex some games and put multiple games against itself. You have this property in Ohio State that obviously turns on eyeballs and everything else. Put it in the night window. Give yourself an opportunity to. You're you're certainly not competing against much as much Big Ten product, but you're not you're not competing against as much product in general because they're going to be more day games and they're going to be night games. So, I think all things being equal, putting this as a night game makes a lot of sense. Um, it is you know Ohio State will have the opportunity to bring in recruits from far and wide, but with high school football going on at that point. Uh, you know, the recruiting calendar has certainly changed a lot with official visits already getting underway here on, on Friday. 
but uh, you you want to be able to have some of those types of scenes and and I'm I'm sure you know I'm, I'm honestly that uh, Western Michigan isn't that upset about having a game where it is maybe being spotlighted a little bit more in terms of that window. Not that the Broncos really have any say in the matter when you're announcing games at this point, but I like both of these these times. Uh, you know, I think as 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 writers, we like noon games because that means that our our total day is not shot. Uh, Stay tuned for the for the Buckeye Huddle post game show following the Western Michigan game at I don't know three in the morning or something like that. But uh, it's nice to see some 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 dates and times announced. Yeah, it is nice to be able to sort of start to put your your fall together. And if you are coming in from out of town, obviously you want to know: Do I need to book a hotel Friday night or do I need to book a hotel Saturday night? Now you have a little bit of structure to your week. So that is the Western Michigan game. The only other game that we know a, a firm kickoff time and network. This is one we knew about a couple weeks ago, but just to sort of continue filling out your calendar, Ohio State, Michigan, of course, a noon game on Fox. So Ohio State, Akron, August 31st, 3.30 p.m. on CBS. Ohio State, Western Michigan, September 7th, 7.30 p.m. on BTN. Ohio State, Michigan, November 30th, 12 p.m. Eastern on Fox. So those are the three we know for sure. Now there's two others where I think we kind of, would have probably put these games in these windows, broadly speaking, basically eliminating prime time. There's two games that we know. We don't know when they're going to air. We don't know where they're going to air, but we know they're not going to be prime time games. The first of those is Homecoming. That is October 26th against Nebraska. Homecoming, just for whatever reason, annually, that is never a night game. It will not be a night game this year. But we don't yet know, Kevin, exactly when or where the Ohio State-Nebraska game is going to kick off on October 26th. Right. Yeah. So the 12 o'clock window, the 3.30 window, network-wise, we're just going to have to see what's going on. It, it would be still pretty early for the networks to use a six-day exemption that week. I mean, I can't believe we're already talking about that right here at the very end of May. But here we are. Um, if Dylan Rayola ends up being something and Nebraska is not the same Nebraska that we've seen the last several years. I mean, maybe there's going to be more demand for that game and we could see it move up the, uh, the hierarchy. This is certainly not going to be a game that's going to slide down to BTN. In my opinion, uh, it's going to be on one of the, it's going to be on one of the over the air networks. In my opinion, maybe sliding down to FS1, depending on what, uh, what else is out there. Uh, wouldn't it be a kick in the chops if this one was, uh, a peacock game because remember we're we haven't even necessarily talked about the whole streaming arm of all of this stuff as well but uh yeah it's it's not going to be a night game so so we know that get your hotel room if you are coming in from out of town for friday night oh hell get one for saturday night too make a weekend of it and enjoy yourself in columbus and buy me a beer while you're at it well i, I think people are hearing you talk about nebraska and this could be a really big game I'm just going to read through the schedule that Nebraska has before they get to the that Ohio State game on October 26th. This is reasonably far into the season. Home against UTEP, home against Colorado, home against Northern Iowa, home against Illinois, at Purdue, home against Rutgers, at Indiana. It is not inconceivable that that could be a matchup of two unbeaten teams. Ohio State has much more a much more challenging schedule before that game than Nebraska does. So it is not entirely inconceivable that could be undefeated Nebraska coming in and playing, you know, whatever it would be, six and one, seven and one Ohio State. That's a possibility. So we'll see where that is, but it will not be a primetime game wherever it is. The other one that we know is not going to be a primetime game, the Ohio State game against Northwestern that's set for Wrigley Field. This one, someone just asked about this on our board a couple days ago, and I said, I don't think it's going to be a primetime game just based on the Wrigleyville neighborhood and their agreement with the Cubs, and they only have so many night games because it's such a pain in the butt to have people around that neighborhood at night. Plus, it's a November game in in Chicago. They generally are probably not going to try to do too many games that close to Lake Michigan in mid mid November. So that's another one, Kevin, where we don't know when and we don't know where it's going to be televised, but we know that's also not going to be a primetime game. All of the jokes are in play here. It took them 100 plus years to put lights at Wrigley. Why would they play a night football game there? Uh, we could talk about the fact of November night games and, and is there a Big Ten agreement? Is there not a Big Ten agreement? How does that necessarily work? Game's not going to be on WGN, so it's not truly going to be a, a game from Wrigley. Um, 
But yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, hopefully it just is not a game where the wind is blowing out or in or sideways <laughs> or swirling or whatever, like the last game that we got to cover at Northwestern where Tom's hat went a flying. Uh, but, you know, it'll be if it, it, it will be fun to go out there for whether or not it is a noon or three thirty game. A noon game would be great because that means maybe we could catch a couple of games with some beers at the Cubby Bear. So. uh just book it right now, three thirty. Why would anything ever work out for Kevin? Then? <laughs> yeah, that that's going to be quite a scene there. That's going to be quite a quite a non traditional tailgating and uh, post game setup there uh, for a college football game. But it should be a really memorable, fun weekend. I'm really looking forward to that one. There are a bunch of games this year on the schedule. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure you are, and uh, the listeners at home are as well. It should be a really fun season. So we have that coming in a little under a hundred days, starting with that Akron game and ending with that Michigan game, and then whatever happens after that, we'll see. But it is going to be a heck of a season. And uh, we also had someone, speaking of of posts on our board, someone was just saying, boy, it's really in the quiet time of year. It's like, nope, not not anymore. As you said earlier, official visits start on Friday. We're going to have coverage of all sorts of that, all sorts of uh, recruiting coverage coming up for you at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We are heading into the busy season for recruiting official visits. Summer camps start next week, so we're going to get a chance to see a bunch of these guys in person, a bunch of guys potentially having a chance to earn offers and uh, at Ohio State camp, Ohio State having a chance to uh, make a big impression on some guys who are visiting. So this is going to be a very busy, uh, a very busy June, as always. May is done, on to June, on to a very busy recruiting month. And then we head into the preseason month where you get Big Ten media days, all the other conference media days, and then summer camp. And then the season's here. Bing, bang, boom. The, the slow part of the offseason is already over. So that would make you should hurry up and get to BuckeyeHuddle.com right now. Sign up for our annual subscription sale. Get access to our, our full team of insiders, our, our board, all that great stuff. Lots of insider information for about 40% off the, annu- the usual cost of an annual subscription. That sale is going to be wrapping up at some point. So I would encourage you, if you're thinking about it, you should do it now because, boy, there's going to be a lot of information flying around there very, very soon as we get into the, all these visits and camps and all that good stuff. So check us out at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And of course, check us out at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle as well. we got all of our podcasts. We'll have a bunch of video from camp. We'll have all, all sorts of good stuff there. Plus, if you've missed out on any of the coverage from the Southern Swing trip that Kevin and Mark just got back from, they've got three weeks of great content there as well, all waiting for you at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.